right, so we have been talking lately a lot about uh, I pray that you will be strengthened with might in the inner man. Okay, so God wants to strengthen us from inside out. We just want something from the outside. You know, I must come and lay hands on you from the outside. You must get a sermon from the outside. You must be blessed from the outside. But what about the inner man? What about Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me. And as the scripture said, he that believeth in me, out of his innermost being shall come, bam, 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 you know, fountains, rivers. So on the inside of us, is a fountain of life on the inside of us, is a fountain filled with all God's treasures, all God's glory, all God's power. So put your hand, say, right here, right here. everything that God has, everything that God is, He has deposited on the inside of me. I've got a mind and I can connect it to my spirit. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my mind man, my thoughts, and I'm going to connect them to my spirit man so that I can meet with the living God. Okay, so God is spirit. So John chapter 4, when Jesus speaks to the woman at the wall, he says to her, you know, she said, where shall we worship? Shall we go to the Presbyterian church or the, to the Apostolic? Where shall we go? You know, Jesus said, listen, woman, the time has come where you will not worship on this mountain, neither in Jerusalem, but when the true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. For God is spirit, and he seeketh such that will worship him in spirit and in truth. God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says the earth was empty, it was void, it was without form, but the Spirit of the Lord hovered upon the deep of the waters and God said, so God created out of a spiritual nature. God created out of a spiritual atmosphere. God created out of somebody who is called Spirit. God is number one Spirit. Okay, when he made you, he breathed spirit upon you. So you are number one spiritual. And you've got to be spiritual to be connected to the Most High God. God has a body. God has a soul because he can think. God has a body because he's been seen. Okay, the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory, the glories of the only God of the Father. So God has a visible body that can be seen, otherwise you are not real. Because you were made in the image and in the likeness of Almighty God. So God can visibly be seen in a body like yours and mine. God has got a soul because God thinks. Okay, God says, I know the thoughts that I have about you. So God thinks about you, so God has a soul. But God is also a spirit. God can appear anywhere, any place, without hindrance, without boundaries. You know, and when John saw him on the Isle of Patmos, he saw like the seven spirits of God. That means the multiplied, million faceted spirit of God can be anywhere, any place, any time. And the, and the marvelous thing about it is if there are five billion people upon the face of the earth, five billion people can talk to one God at the same time. God can hear all five billion people's prayers, answer them in the diversity of it, give every person what he needs at that moment of time. Five billion people calling God and God says to five billion, yes, son. Yes, daughter. And everyone can be so diverse. One can ask for money. One can ask for health. One can ask for peace. And the same God can answer all prayers at the same time. Okay? So that is why we've got to be spiritual. We've got to connect to the spirit realm to meet with the almighty God. Okay? So when it comes to prayer, most of the time we think of our grocery list that we grew up with. Okay, so we have a lot of prayers that we can pray, you know, and we can pray, you know, and we can pray. But, you know, that's ritualistic stuff. And then when we grow older, we get to know that prayer is running into God, bombarding with our grocery list. And maybe we have this shotgun mentality. You know, we've got two bullets in and everyone has got like 134 small bullets of hail in it. And maybe one will hit the throne of God. And we go, pa, 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 pa. Father, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me, 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 Father, do for me. Do, 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 do. Father, go get for me. Get, 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 get. You know, and we always go, God must do for us. God must get for us. God must move on our behalf. God must do for us. You know, and maybe one of those bullets will hit God and say, wow, I've got a testimony. 
I have prayed now for four years that God will, you know, one day make my hair grow blonde. And then I found out that I can use hair color and now I have blonde hair or something like that, you know, you know. And then we have our shotgun mentality. But prayer, there's a higher form of prayer. So if we go to the life of David, I think it will stand out more and more that the Bible says he was a man after God's own heart. That doesn't mean he was running after God's heart. That means that God said, my heart is beating with this man's heart. He's a man after my heart. In other words, if I look at David, says, that's how I would like all my children to be. Okay, so this is the way David prayed. Pray. He says, oh God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Okay, so this is what David says. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Okay, what is meditation? Meditation is a constant thinking into one direction till I have connection. Okay, my own description. Getting your thoughts in a direction till you make a connection. That if I can learn the art of spiritual meditation, maybe I've stepped into the highest type of prayer that anybody has ever stepped into in this human race that we are living in. I mean, to me this was a shock. No, no, there was a, the greatest revivalist of all times, people say, would be Charles Finney. Okay, every city that he went to had revival. And that was just 200 years ago. And after the revivals, when he left the city in a space of two to three years, that 89 to 90% of that city was still saved. That's how small the backsliding uh, number was without people following them up and having churches built after Charles Finney was there. Okay? So Charles Finney had the supernatural connection that when he prayed, God moved. Okay, so he was studying for a lawyer. I just want to bring it back to the screaming and shouting. He was studying to be a lawyer, and he was in his third and fourth year of studying, and uh, the guy that he worked for was an elder in the Presbyterian church, and he invited him to go with him for prayer meetings. Okay, so Charles Finney went to these prayer meetings, totally didn't believe in God, but the Bible was a handbook that they used in studying law because of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt, thou shalt not, thou shalt, thou shalt not. Okay, so he went to this prayer meeting, at this Presbyterian church and he watched these people prayed. So he looked at them and they came with a grocery list. Oh, Father, I pray for Aunt Sue that she will get out of the wheelchair. Father, we pray for Aunt Mary that she will now get married to Aunt Uncle Sam that's been visiting her for the last 12 years. Oh, Father, we pray that. And he went there the first week, he went there the second week, he went there the third week. The third week he stood up and he said to the community of people, he said, do you really believe in God? This elder said, of course we believe in God. He says, it doesn't look like you believe in you. And, and they said, but wow, you know, we, we do believe in God. He says, but do you really believe that God listens to you? They said, of course he listens to us. They said, how is it that I've been coming here for three weeks and every week you pray the same stuff and I never heard anybody say that God has answered them? He said, when I asked my father for something, he either said yes or he said no. Either he gave me the stuff or he said you couldn't have the stuff. He said, but it seems like this God doesn't talk back to you, neither give you what you are asking for. So Charles Finney said, it shocked him to find out that people were praying, 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 screaming, bringing their grocery list without ever expecting answers to prayer. Okay? So I went to this church and everybody is screaming. And when I saw them in town, they looked just like the rest of the world. There was no change to them. So Charles Finney said he went into the bushes and this was his prayer. He never opened his mouth. He said, if there is a God, reveal yourself to me today. He said, and he felt something on the inside of him, twisting and turning. And he said, it was so rough that he was scared he's going to make a nuisance of himself. So he went deeper into the bushes and he said, if there is a God, You've got to reveal yourself to me. He said, and he felt this thing get stronger. And he was so scared, maybe somebody would see him if he break out in tears or something that's now growing. So he went deeper into the bushes. And as he went deeper in the bushes, he said, 
God, if you are real. And he said, he started bursting out in tears. He felt the love of God just washing him, cleaning him up, making him a new creature. And he said he wanted to scream out, but nothing came out but gratitude from the deepest of his heart. And in meditation, no words out of his mouth, he started seeing how God would move. He started seeing God's love for sinners. He started seeing how God would save the lost. He started seeing how God would use him to get multitudes into the kingdom. And he just saw it. And he just lied there and he saw things, saw visions, visions, visions. And he went back into the city, woke up the elder that he worked for and said, God is real and I've met you. And he said, can we have a prayer meeting? Okay, needless to say, revival broke out in this town. Nobody led Charles Finney to Jesus. Nobody told him how we must be saved. He got a connection by putting his thoughts into one direction. Maybe there's an art that we have led for the Eastern cults and thought, you know, meditation is not a Christian word. Maybe meditation is for the fat Buddhists or for the skinny Shintoists or for the wicked Confucius. You know, and we left everything for the Eastern people to have meditation. Instead of trying to find out, maybe God has got thoughts too. Maybe God can think too, okay? So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Not my prayers. When it came to prayers, David said, hear my cry, O God. When it came to meditation, he said, may it be acceptable in thy sight. Okay, so the Bible says in the last days God will pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters, young men and old men, and then God gives a supernatural promise. He says when He pours out His Spirit upon the people, the young people are supposed to see visions. Now how many would love to see a vision of God using you, God taking your hands, put it on the sick... How many would love to see a vision of here comes my boyfriend? Ah, here comes my girlfriend. Ah, now I know who I'm going to marry. The Bible says, and I will pour out my spirit and the young men will see visions. Now I'm going to tell you tonight, the easiest way to get a vision is to understand meditating prayer. Or prayer in meditation. Okay? If I keep on praying, my ears must keep on listening. If my ears keep on listening, my mind must keep on analyzing. If my mind must keep on analyzing, my spirit has no opportunity to reflect what God says to my thoughts so that I can be a spiritual giant. I hope you got it. I said some super. So the more I talk, the more my, my ears must listen, the more my mind must receive, the more it must analyze, and the less I have an opportunity to listen to what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to me. Okay? So I pray aloud to get the stuff of the day out of me. So I walk around. Bale re sham brocho mokru viala teka brest nika valaya zombros tibia chalamas kede. Father, I worship you. I praise you. I honor you. You. I don't even think I just bless him for who he is. Nandre bi la bahara so. Whoa, remocho vika da ha zel gras te mirava. I bless you. I worship you. I empty myself of today. Then I say, Brene Kubala, Sete, Vilevan, Godobra. All of a sudden, during the Our Father, I normally pray for the stuff I need. Because when it comes to give us this day our daily bread, oh, Father, thank you. <laughs> Father, I need 200 rand. Father, I need this. Father, I need that. Oh, forgive us our trespasses. Oh, I quickly set all those people free. Get them out of my mind. Forgive me. I quickly ask forgiveness where I hurt him. Quincy Spirit does something. Then I, oh, and for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Then I switch to channel spirit. Not pray in the spirit, channel spirit where I go into meditation. So normally I either go sit down or I go lie down or I just put something and normally I go lie down, put my foot somewhere on the chair and I, whoa, 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 Father, oh my Father. And before I know it, I see visions. Okay, so this is how I get my sermons. I don't get my sermons by reading Bible. I read Bible because I got a sermon. 
And I think this is why the sermons are different than most preachers. I don't read Bible to get the sermon. I read the Bible because I got the sermon. Okay, so I'm lying and God starts speaking. <laughs> and later it's so much, that if I don't write it now, God, would you keep your point? Uh, if I don't write it now, I'm not going to remember it. So I say, yeah, round it, I punt, write quickly, and I jump up, I switch on my bed lamp, and Wow, Romago, Josh, the bell, the these the the man, and oh, go, bro, shake it, eh? Woo! Father, would you just keep it there? I just want to read the scripture quickly. Okay, I just want to check the scripture. Bam, blah, blah, ha. Whoa, then I get up and I walk down the aisle and I walk up and down the road. Woo! And I go sit up. Choo! Wow! Wee! Mmm! Wee! The Bible says, you know, especially Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, Peter was on the roof of the house and it was time for lunch. Now imagine he was fasting this dude. On top of the roof of the house and now it's lunch time and the smoke is coming through the chimney. This guy is in... So he gets a vision of a sheet with food in it. <laughs> After he saw the vision, he meditated. The Bible says, and as he was thinking, the word deep in meditation, as he was in meditation, now God starts speaking. He said, Peter, there's three men waiting for you at the gate. Don't argue, go with them. Next, Peter said, who, who? They said, there's three men. He said, huh? You know, I just saw three men. So if I want to see visions, I got to force myself to meditate a little bit more on the things that God shows me than I meditate on the car that I want to buy tomorrow. Okay? If I, if I go to the shop and I fit my little dress on, and everything is just fine. Ah, that night you go to bed. You don't have to meditate on the dress. It's already there. All you have to do is get the money, go buy the thing. Your meditation will not get you the dress. It'll help you to dream how you're going to look in the dress. and It'll maybe motivate you to buy it and not the other one. Okay, But you don't have to meditate on it. You can just go and buy it. It's already there. But what about spiritual stuff? What about getting nations saved? What about getting people out of wheelchairs? What about prophesying to somebody who said, last Thursday you had a dream and you dreamed something and they forgot their dream and you're the one to remind them of their dream. What about speaking for a change and changing lives? What about being spiritual where people can come in your atmosphere and say, ooh, ooh, ooh. what is this man carrying with him? And that doesn't come from loud praying. That comes from meditation. So visions doesn't come when I scream at God all the time because my mind must listen. If I stop, my mind must now listen to something else. It listen now to the inner man. I pray that you will be strengthened with might in the inner man. So here from my innermost being is a river that will water the thought man. And thoughts will start germinating that could not be birthed by human knowledge or by impartation from the outside. So there's a lot of thoughts that God seed thought that he has been sowing into your life by the word of God that's been going through all the years. And he wants some water on that seed. The only way to water it, God showed me one day, he said, son, if you don't water the seed, it's not going to grow. I say, how do I water it? And he said, by your meditation. So if I said to him, Mm, and I start thinking about the word, start thinking about what I want to do for God. I'm watering the seeds of God, and before I know it, my mind is in total subjection to my spirit. And all of a sudden, when I stand up to speak, there's authority, there's power. When I say to a cripple, rise up and walk, I don't do it because I'm under somebody's anointing. I do it because the Bible says you have the unction of the Holy One, and you don't need anyone to teach you. But this anointing will teach you. First John 2, verse 20 and 27. So there's an anointing here that teaches this man here 
that will flow out in supernatural power that has not yet been seen before. If I just hear what other people say, I still function under other people's anointings. I operate under other people's anointings. I have an anointing that is working supernaturally. But what if I were use the anointing that teaches me from the inside, not from the outside, from the inside because stuff that's been placed there throughout the years and the God man starts speaking to the soul man and all of a sudden visions and dreams are birthed and I start operating in the supernatural like nobody has operated before. Okay, so meditation is like this. You don't have to be alone like the Eastern cults. You don't have to smoke marijuana to get into meditation. <laughs> You don't have to smoke a peace pipe, a fruit pipe, a dacha pipe, or, you know, opium pipe. You don't have to sniff, you know, nothing to get into meditation. You can meditate anywhere, any place. That's what the Bible says. If you want to meet with your father in secret, just go into your room and lock your door. Okay, so I can lock my door anywhere, any place. So I walk here and there's a lot of people, there's thousands and I got to minister to them. So I walk, now I'm in a hurry. I've got 20 minutes and 10,000 people. So I say, bless, 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 bless. All of a sudden, hey, I just want to bless a few people better. So I immediately starts meditating. Mm. So I come, mm. lady you suffer with you have this you can't sleep properly because this is happening when I switch to meditation immediately visions start popping up supernatural powers did you like that all right bless 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 so I operate I'm in the anointing I can bless and every person will be blessed they will all fall, all fall out they will all love they will all have the joy but every now and then I say hey there's some people that think oh well this is just normal so I switch to channel meditation. Hmm. So I go to a level that's a little bit higher than screaming at God, screaming at the people. I switch to something that's of a higher level. So maybe sometimes when I'm quiet, I'm more spiritual than when I'm screaming. What do we do with our thought life? What do we do with meditating? What do we do with the word we get every Saturday, every Sunday? Do we go home and tell everybody, ooh, we got a good word? Or do I go home and say, mm, that's scripture. Ooh, 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 ooh. First Thessalonians 5, 23, it says, I pray God that your spirit, your soul, and your body be preserved till the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your spirit must be preserved. Your soul must be preserved. Your body must be preserved. And God spoke to me and said, you know what? We preserve our bodies. We spend hours in front of the mirror. So we get to our souls, okay? We train our mind, we train our brain life, we study, we... but what about our spirit man? What about the one that's so important to meet with the Most High God who's spirit? How much time do we take to see that our spirit man is cool? Hmm? Okay, how do I get that right? Not with prayer, okay? We think that spiritual activities makes us spiritual then all churchgoers must be giants. Okay? Just like sleeping in a garage doesn't make you a car. Going to church doesn't make you a holy saint. Okay? And if prayer was it, we all learned how to pray and we all go to prayer meetings and we all pray our Father. So there must be something of a higher quality that will put me in a dimension where I don't have to meet with the status quo and the people around me, I can step into something that's a little bit higher. Okay? Anybody can scratch around with the chickens. Very few can float around with the eagles. 
Okay? When the wind comes, the eagle stretches out his wings. He says, Wee! And people say, Wow! How did it get there? By the wind of the Spirit. You know? Anybody can scratch around with the chickens. But when the wind of the Spirit comes, do you go out or do circumstances pressure? So, what takes you on that wind of the Spirit? By getting your life trained in meditation. Mm. Mm. When people, look at that, look at that. Mm, there's a good God. It's far above that stuff, man. This stuff will float away tomorrow. There'll be something else. The day after that, there'll be so, There'll always be something if you want something. Or you can have God. That's always there too. The higher one. Meditation. Say, dear Father, teach me the art of meditation. Dear Father, teach me the art of meditation. How do you think Ezekiel got the visions at the river? When everybody was complaining, Ezekiel saw visions of God. He couldn't have been speaking out loud because they would have crucified him. Okay, I mean, if he would have sang, Blessed be the name of the Lord, they would have killed him because they said, how can we sing the Lord's song? So Ezekiel must have, Ezekiel, what's that grin on your face? <laughs> you see Babylonians. I see angels. I see a wheel inside a wheel. I see when the one moves, they all move together. I see winged creatures, man. They fall. I see the throne. You crazy? Yeah? I see a valley full of dry bones. I even prophesy over those bones to, re to have revival. When did you do that? Oh, why? You were moaning. Okay. How come God can do spiritual stuff with people that doesn't even open their mouths? Then you get the other group that's screaming their lungs out and God is doing nothing for them. Okay? So, what about, dear Father, help us to meditate. How, how, how big is your spirit? How much have you trained your spirit, man? Okay? How hungry are you spiritually? How thirsty are you spiritually? 